Hello once again everyone. So, bonus video for this week. Uh, unscheduled bonus video. Um, with quite a few of my guys now taking part in my Fiore class, and we've been working with the sword in one hand, this has come up, and so I figured it was about time to do a video on it. So, an important skill that pretty much everyone should know if they're going to do anything involving swords that not a lot of people necessarily put a ton of thought or practice into is, you know, drawing them. So, let's talk about some options here, and let's also talk about how things will change depending upon what sword you're carrying. Now, I'm just using my little uh, Frankenblade. He's not particularly long, but this is about as long as I'd want on a day carry sword. Uh, any longer than this, and it's going to start, trust me, getting in the way. Um, I have worn a sword to parties, and oh my god, that was, that was obnoxious. Um, but, either way. About this is the sort of length I want, and you'll see different setups, so this all is still applicable if you are using a belt and two-point suspension, it works if you're using a baldric, it works um, if you're using a sheath and a frog, all that is still fine, you know, be it historical or non-historical, either way, you have a sword and you need to get it out. So, firstly, let's discuss some general things to be aware of. Um, number one, depends upon the length of your sword, um, and like I said, this is about as long as I'd ever want on a day carry. Any longer than this, it's going to start getting in the way. Shorter swords obviously will come out quicker. Um, longer swords are going to take a bit more time. Depending upon the curve of your sword, it may draw more easily or it may not draw as easily. Um, but we'll get back to that in a moment. The other thing to consider is what historical advice do we have for this topic? When it comes to the, when it comes to the West, not nearly as much as we would like. Um, which is kind of a running theme when it comes to Western martial arts. So we do have some manuals that describe it. For example, um, some of the military saber and or uh, infantry saber backsword, what's that? Infantry saber sources describe how to unsheathe the weapon as part of parade, which could be inferred as another general way to unsheathe the weapon. Alternatively, uh, we do have, for example, Fiore describes the idea of using a sword that is already in sheath as a defensive tool against the dagger, um, but that he's carrying it as opposed to having it attached to his belt. Not that you couldn't do some of the things if it was attached to your belt, just that it limits some of your options. Um, we also have, for example, Pietro Mont has a action out of his drawing of the sword, which I will show in a moment, and some Italian rapier manuals also describe the footwork and cutting you should do when you are drawing the sword, which I will also go over. So, all that is to say, let's get into it. So, how to draw the sword. Firstly, depending upon your suspension, things may change. Mine is a two-point suspension, which is regarded as generally the easiest to uh, draw the sword from. Now, when it comes to a sword like this, it's not too difficult for me to just grab and pull straight out. However, that's a, an interesting thing to note, is that if you try to do this purely one-handed, you're going to have to deal with the tension of it pulling against your belt, which it will come free, but you can't necessarily afford that all the time. Usually it's best to take your offhand and place it onto, you know, either grabbing the scabbard or grabbing near, so that way you have a pull and push type of draw. That will get it out faster. Um, it'll just generally be a little bit easier and it won't be jarring. So, your first draw is going to essentially be place your hand here, grab nice and close to the cross guard or the or whatever you're using, draw. Now, the reason that I say grab nice and close to the cross guard is because as anyone has seen my my gripping on the sword, you've usually I'm advocating something along these lines, especially if I'm going to be fighting with it with one hand. However, uh, for this, because of the actions we're going to be immediately put into, I really recommend you just go ahead and grab nice and close because you want that firmness of wrist. Another thing to consider is that if I have my thumb on the blade, I get compression there when I try to draw it, which I'd have to adjust and I just can't afford that time-wise. This, my wrist can flex or my uh, pinky can release. So, bear that in mind. Now, an interesting note, uh, some people may be used to the idea of drawing it that way, which, with a double-edged sword, it doesn't actually matter, necessarily. I mean, if I draw this way, I can do my normal sort of actions, 
if I draw this way, it still can get into my hand quite easily. And it's much more similar to the Japanese style of drawing, as I have a couple of people who practice Kenjutsu or, or other styles, um, so that was more familiar to them. However, um, it's not designed for that. This requires a much more narrow draw, as opposed to being able to just kind of pull it out and the curve allowing it to get, get out faster. So for some actions, that will hurt you in the long run when it comes to using this. So basically, draw the tool like the tool is. Um, if that training is already embedded in you, you may find that affects things, which is an interesting thing I noticed while we were practicing around with this kind of thing. But anyway, so generally when you draw the sword, you just keep it at hip level and bring it straight out. Now, with longer swords, you may not be able to do that due to length of your arm versus length of the sword. Now, you can kind of compensate for this by pushing the scabbard or sheath further back, but that may not always be an option. Another way to get around that, and the way I actually have to draw my, uh, my wrist breaker that I showed in the Civil War Swords video, is you instead lift the scabbard. So now I am drawing upward, which gives me a little bit more reach and gives it more time for the blade. As you can see, I've got my arm all the way up, and I've got quite a bit more reach um, to bring the blade out. So that is shown in some military manuals as a way to get the sword out, which works very well. So if you're using a longer sword, uh, like a rapier or something along those lines, you may wish to look at drawing more upward. Anyway though, let's talk about some offensive options and then defensive options when it comes to drawing the sword. So what do I mean by offense defense? Well, there is, I see a fight is about to happen and I'm going to get my sword out so I'm ready for it. That's the offensive way. The other way is, oh crap, someone is attacking me right now. I need to get this sword out and ready to party. That's defensive. So we'll deal with offensive first and then defensive. So for offensive, you have a couple different options. Uh, your first and easiest is going to be, I believe, Pietro Mont's unsheathing, uh, followed by a simple quick cut. So what he does is he takes the sword, draws out, which allows me to get a little Unterhau, basically. Now I don't extend up all the way, I just cut to the point that my wrist naturally stops. From here I can launch a thrust, and then a cut. Very easy, quick pattern to do. Very good for practicing drawing the sword. So here is that once again. Draw, thrust, cut. And we're good. Now as you notice, when I draw the sword, it pretty much always puts me up into ox slash prima. That's why prima one prime is that position. If you draw the sword, that's where you should end up. Now, choices wise, you can you can kind of do whatever you need to do. For example, if I see this coming and I've drawn the sword, I can then go into Vamtag, I can then remain in Prima, I can move down into whatever I'm going to do, I can move into any other two-handed position. It's really up to me at that point. Um, that's a more aggressive way of doing it. Alternatively, the way that it is recommended in most Italian sources is to do it with a step back. So that would be, I see my opponent and I are about to fight, I draw the sword while stepping back to gain myself distance, which puts me up into Prima, as well as voiding my body back against any potential attack, and from here I can settle into whatever guard I want to take. I've gotten a lot of distance between me and my opponent, and I can start encroaching in and getting ready for the fight. So the footwork on that. Pretty simplistic. All you're going to do is you're going to take your lead foot and just pass backwards uh, without taking your left foot off the ground. It's a pretty staple position and not terribly difficult to do. So here's that once again. Here, back and ready to go. Nothing too complicated so far. And I already showed the idea of drawing more upward. So with that one, you can get some different options, so you can either grab here and draw straight, not bad, and if you're using a suspension that holds the sword straight up, straight down, which they do exist, then that's probably going to be your go-to. Alternatively, if you have a little bit of wiggle room, you can turn the sword over. So now I've got a sort of backhand draw, which brings this over and from above. Alternatively, if you can't rotate it, you can always just grab it this way. Same idea. 
So you have options. I mean, it's got two edges, and they both are exactly the same. Now from there, what you can very easily launch into is just cutting downward, which we'll talk again about in the defensive section. But if you were to unsheathe it, it can just very easily come out and be ready to rock. Now, let's talk more about the defensive options, because honestly, if the sword is out, you're fine. But when it comes to drawing, what most people are thinking about is the idea of someone attacking you unexpectedly. So, the most important and most universal one in pretty much every single sword system is going to be basically the bogan. So, how this works is, in comes a cut from this side, you know, whatever, or, or my front, or something along those lines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to keep my eyes on the incoming sword, and I'm going to step away slash past it. You're not going to necessarily always get the strongest parry on this, but you just need to get steel between you and the incoming attack. So, I'm walking along, here comes the attack, grab out here while moving away from the incoming cut. Ideally, you want to catch it somewhere around here. If you catch it here, it will cause your arm to collapse, but that's okay, that's why we're moving. And from there, you can launch into a cut, or book it, or whatever you need to do. Now, important note for this that I didn't really appreciate until I got to work with uh, a friend of mine who is a practitioner of Toyama Ryu, which is you need to get used to having your wrist in a very strong position lined up with the sword. It needs to be strong. You cannot let it be loose. Because when someone gives you a proper two-handed chop with the intent to hit your head, if that is at all not firm, this is going to collapse and it hurts a lot. And the last thing you want to do is then get stuck in a sword fight where you've already been cut once because your parry wasn't particularly good and now your lead wrist hurts. So, nice and firm. It's okay for there to be a slight bend in this elbow. Um, because of how we're moving, it just allows me to cover more. But that can't bend at all. And that's another reason I advocate grabbing nice and close to the cross guard slash hilt, is it puts you more directly close to the strong. So, here is that once again, now from the side. Cut's coming from here. Boom, as I move to defend myself, then I can launch into whatever I want to do. Pretty simplistic, pretty useful. But, what if they come from the other side, or something along those lines. Well, that's where things get a little more exciting. Because now, if they're coming from this side, I can't bogan anymore. At this point, I'm going to need to use my footwork to get away from them this way, while at the same time giving them threat from this side. So, what I'd recommend in this case is to take the sword, turn it. Um, if it's already up against you, then you can just grab it reverse like I already showed. But, turn it cut from above and just try to beat their sword down. Now this is actually very uh, invocative of Fiore's sword in the one hand, as he has quite a few options from here. He will, for example, do basically the bogan and then thrust. He will alternatively cut up, then pass in and do half sword type stuff. Or, much like this, he will step out as he beats the sword down, which is particularly uh, good to be able to do. Now, I should point out, Fiori does not actually show the sword in the sheath for this part, but you can do all of them if it is sheathed. Anyway, though, here's that once again. So I've got my sword. Here comes attack from this side. Grab, rotate, step out, cut down. At the same time, I'm moving away from it. I'm not looking for anything fancy here. I'm not trying to cut his hand or anything along those lines. If I do, cool. I just want to reading rainbow type cut, just over and down, and just smack his sword out of the way. At that point, then I can launch into whatever I need to do, either running or taking a guard or what have you. So, that's pretty much the main ones that I would recommend, are either bogan run, or step out and reading rainbow. They're simple, they work with pretty much every sword that you could have attached to you, and really, they're just the fastest and, and simplest. Um, for offensive draws, we talked about those. Now, if you look into more Eastern martial arts, you will see, for example, uh, Toyama Ryu, which I mentioned earlier, has katas from the draw, where they show the idea of cutting the lead wrist, 
as the attack is coming in, cutting the person's chin as the attack is coming in, things like that. Those probably will work with enough practice, but I can't recommend them at the moment because I haven't gotten to play with them that much versus these I have. And so these have my vote of confidence, if you will. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much all I've got on the idea of drawing the sword, regardless of your setup. And some recommendations for how you can do it one way or the other. Um, otherwise, though, I hope that was informative and helped out some people. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other fun techniques and historical anecdotes another time.